Hi everyone, just a quick one today to give my initial thoughts on the PlayStation Portal. It will have to be a very quick video as the PlayStation Portal does one thing and one thing only, and that is stream from your PlayStation 5. That's not necessarily a bad thing though. For those who already have a PlayStation 5 as their main gaming system, don't have any interest in any other consoles or retro gaming handhelds, but don't have ready access to the TV PlayStation 5 is connected to. Oh, and this is all assuming they have a modern decent router, of course. So the PlayStation Portal ultimately is very much what it looks like, a thin tablet screen sandwiched between a DualSense controller. That can be everything you need the Portal to be, of course. The DualSense controller is fantastic, and for me, it really does make a difference to have the familiar control scheme and haptic feedback while streaming the PlayStation 5 games. But there is no getting around the fact that the Portal is a single use case handheld. The USB-C charging port on the underside means it makes the most sense to charge the handheld laying flat rather than propped against everything. And the headphone jack at least means you can connect some wired earphones or headphones, though the lack of Bluetooth connection is a bit of frustration. The thinness and lightness to the portal certainly plays to its favour. I find it very ergonomic and incredibly natural to use with the premium finish that you'd expect from a first party accessory. I wouldn't have any fatigue issues playing through until the battery flattens out, which is around four to six hours in my experience. So more in line than a dual sense controller over a actual dedicated streaming device. With that said, the portal has two notable, very strong strengths. The one being its general ease of use and the other being its controls. Due to the familiarity of the dual sense controls, there's no need for button remapping and almost everything works exactly as you'd expect and want it to. I say almost, as the implementation of the touchpad controls are super awkward, with two mini on-screen touchpads appearing when touching the screen, which are a nightmare to use due to their general lack of responsiveness. Fortunately, the majority of games aren't too touchpad dependent, and the solution available is at least good enough to get you through things like uh, menu navigation okay. Speaking of things that are okay, let's just have a quick listen to some of the game audio at max volume. The audio isn't throwing the bin levels are terrible, considering its size, but it is far from great either. So it firmly sits in the just okay category for me, which I do find a little disappointing considering it's RRP. So, as briefly mentioned earlier, the portal's general ease of use and pick up and play nature does offer a great level of convenience. The setup process is very easy, although the initial update did take around half an hour to actually install. But once it was done, it found my PS5 instantly and I got streaming within seconds. It's worth mentioning that my home setup is ideal for streaming with a modern aftermarket multiband router and speedy internet. And the nature of streaming device is mileage can and will vary wildly. I've not experienced any stuttering, blurring or slowdown with my portal so far, but there has already been a lot of reports of this, which is worth bearing in mind. So as much as I'd love to have seen a Vita successor. The portal does do what it was outlined to do, though I do wish it did more. At the very least made use of the PS Plus streaming catalog, so it wasn't just tied to a PS5 all the time. But my overall view of the portal is you know whether or not you'll pick one up, be it now or in a sale down the line. Or you'll know if you were just going to stay away from it forever and always. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's it for now though. Thanks so much for watching.